Hey guys, Tactical Diesel Dad. Today I cleaned my air filter uh, on my Banks cold air intake. Uh, this is my experience. Check the video out real quick. Um, it wasn't meant to be a how-to on cleaning. This is just what, what I experienced today, uh, what I dealt with. And uh, then I'll go over the reasons for me not liking this air intake. So this is what I'm dealing with. Can somebody uh, make a smart comment about, oh, just a little bit more time. Well, yeah, time is money. So I'm gonna undo that clip. I've already unbolted the, uh, the sleeve from the turbo. I've got the crankcase filter uh, tube right here uh, unhooked. And now I'm having to mess with trying to, trying to unhook two more wires down there. I mean, I'm 30, 45 minutes in. I've got a ladder that I've got to put next to my truck just to take this stupid thing out. So uh, when you comment about, oh, it's just a little bit extra time. Yeah, I'd rather be out making money right now and marketing and, and growing my business instead of uh, dealing with taking this monstrosity out of my engine just to get to the filter. All right, so I have the intake box out and look at all that oil that uh, just gets put in there from the uh, crankcase housing instead of routing it somewhere else. I mean, if you take your crankcase filter out, that's gonna be a, a hundred times worse. I mean, it just sprays oil all over your engine bay, even with uh, a filter added to it. Um, so that's what's going in your turbo. Thanks to the EPA, that's government. So here's your uh, ram, ar ram air actuator. This is way past time for me to clean this. Um, I probably got, I mean, look at all that oil that just from the, uh, the crankcase filter going into your turbo. I mean, that's that's what's going into your turbo. Don't tell me that's good for your engine. I mean, it just gets everywhere. It's even it's even inside the uh, connection housings. There's oil in there because that's in that intake. Um, so way past time for me to clean this filter. Super dirty. But then you know when you clean this thing, you gotta let it dry. So it's gonna sit here for several hours. Um, so time to get to it. This is why I don't like waiting 50,000 miles. I mean, it says to clean it every 50,000 miles. You tell me this is less than 50,000 miles. You tell me if that's, if that's a good recommendation. I mean, I'm not an engineer, but, uh, it needs it more than 50,000 miles and they need, they need to make it easier to access. All right, so I've rinsed multiple times, two applications of cleaner, let it dwell for 15, 20 minutes at a time. And this is the, uh, the dirt and grime that I'm just fighting to get out of those fins. Um, but easiest way, I took a bucket, Dawn soap, short bristle brush, it's soft, and I'm cleaning it with the Dawn soap and just trying to get down there in the cracks and everything that seems to be the best way to get those fins clean all right guys one thing i did while i had my uh intake box off is that you have the ram air actuator here and i just sprayed lubricant right there and uh i know it, this doesn't really matter but i sprayed some here too just to keep rust off of that that metal rod right there but you know a dealership's gonna sit there and, and charge you you know 75 bucks hey we're gonna we're gonna lubricate your uh, your intake actuator and charge you 75 bucks when it's just a little squirt of oil right there. So something to do when you're cleaning your air filter. All right, so finally got it in. The hardest thing is lining up this with your turbo and that uh, rubber hose that they give you to connect your turbo to your intake um, tubing is it needs to be like half inch longer because getting that second band on there is such a pain in the rear and you've got to line this up perfectly and then make sure that it doesn't hit your oil filter which is down there somewhere um it's just a huge pain in the rear um and then you know trying to get the box to line up with your your ram air intake because you have a uh an inlet here and then a side inlet over here and your actuator will open up, open or close depending on if it wants to draw air from both sides. Um, and you can see down there, it ain't red, it's freaking black, but you know, it has the red oil on it. Um, but it's just, you need to clean it out more often. This is 50,000 miles is way too long. 
So as you guys saw, um, trying to pull this monstrosity, all this plastic in the box and unhooking all this stuff, pulling it out of the engine bay just to access your filter, I think is a legitimate gripe. Uh, I am not pretending that I'm an engineer that this, that the, uh, you know, I saw a video that Gail Banks made where some of the other cold air intakes, the, the tube where it comes down into uh, and bolts to the turbo, um, it actually gets smaller right there. And uh, that's one thing that he points out. So great, you got more airflow. Well, give me access to the filter. Don't make me take the entire thing apart. It took me well over two hours today messing with this thing. It's a massive piece of junk. That's all it is. Um, and so when I say get a K&N air filter, whether or not you like K&N, it you know, doesn't matter. Keep it stock. Um, I'm just pointing out that uh, time is money. It's a lot of wasted time. And that little sleeve uh, in between the turbo and the down tube uh, for the for your intake, man, it's not just banks, but other manufacturers do it too. It's like, man, give me another half an inch because there needs to be a little bit of play. If it's not exactly perfect lined up, uh, it pulls off of the the down tube. That 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 sleeve pulls off the down tube whenever you bolt the that band clamp down. Um, so uh, I just think it could be designed a lot better. Uh, and and I want to let people know, hey, you're spending a lot of money, you know, six, seven hundred dollars on an intake. I'd like it to perform and, and make it easily accessible for me. Pulling that junk, all those plastic pieces out of the engine bay is unnecessary. For what? One extra horsepower? I mean, it's just ridiculous. Um, so point being is, is I'm going to let people know, Hey, here's my experience. If you want to keep your stock, great. If you want to go with a different brand, great. Um, but I'm, somebody commented that, Oh, you, 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 uh, don't like the not hearing the turbo. And so you go with an inferior setup. It's like, no, I went with the best setup that I could possibly find. And I'm disappointed with it, which is why I made the video so that you guys can make an educated decision for yourself. I value my time. I want to be out marketing. And you guys should think the same way, that your time is valuable. And when you're gonna spend top dollar for supposedly a top engineered product, I want ease of access. I don't wanna waste my time. Um, and you saw that they recommend every 50,000 miles. That is way too dirty to not clean uh, until 50,000 miles. That's a lot of, of uh, dirt and, and, and you know mixes with the oil that's on the, on the filter. You've got to clean it more than that. So when you're cleaning it more than that, it is it becomes even more of an issue because you are having to disassemble it and take it out of the engine bay every single time. Uh, so it could be engineered a lot better. That's all I'm saying. So I appreciate you guys watching. I hope this helps. Um, it was a, a huge pain in the butt today. I'm glad it's done. I did my fuel filters at the same time today. So I got a lot of maintenance done on my truck uh, before we get to the dog days of summer here in Texas because I don't want to be doing that when it's 100 something degrees outside. So I should be set for the summer and they, and uh, this should be, you know, get me through the, the rest of the year. So thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe if you like the content and you guys stay safe.